Hey, what's up, everybody? This is DJ Keo, and today I want to talk about stems on Serato. Before we get into this, uh, there's a th couple things I want to make clear, right? I like the technology. I think there's a lot of potential here. Um, I definitely think that it's something very, very interesting, and it's helpful for DJs in general. So I, I want to make that clear. I'm on board all of this stuff. There's things I like about it. There's things I don't like about it. And I think the things I don't like about it are pretty straightforward. It's not like it's a uh, allegiance to any DJ software, which I think is stupid, but <laughs> I'll get to that in a second. So mostly it's about implementation and where I think things could be improved upon and you know where I think things kind of suffer a little bit. So first things first, this is awesome. And I like that this is coming to Serato. So Serato is not the first. I believe Algorithm DJ was first and then Virtual DJ was second. And they've had it for a couple of years now. Tractor had a version of stems before everybody else, but their version with stems is not AI driven. So it's meaning that you had to actually buy songs that were designed to be stems. And there's a, there's a whole debate about whether or not this is a better way to do it versus the software, because if you have songs that are actually designed to be stems, well, it's going to be mixed and mastered correctly. So uh, the audio separation is going to be a lot better than a computer could do on a fly because, you know, these are the official songs that came from whatever record company or whatever. It's a cleaner sound. It's larger files, though. So there's a there's a problem with that. Um, you can't do it on the fly. You know, you need certain songs to be made in advance. And I believe that there was some kind of software that Tractor had developed and it would separate the songs for you, the sounds for you. But again, it wasn't as good as if it was an official song that you bought from a store that was designed to be stems. The idea never took off on Tractor. Everyone was like, ah, eh. And I think that was more a problem of hardware, but I'll get to hardware in a second. I have a huge beef about hardware, but... I think that was more of the problem was that Tractor didn't have good hardware. And so people were just like, man, I'm, it's a good idea, but I don't want to get into it. And then the biggest problem and it's the like biggest elephant in the room was nobody got on board. And I think I talked about this before in a video, like a long, long, you got to go way back when a, like five, six years ago, you got to go way, way back. But I said, stems is never going to take off unless it's readily available to everybody or major artists from all the record companies get on board and produce their own stems. None of which happened. <laughs> so here we are. I think Serato's implementation of stems is pretty cool. Um, there's two things that I really, really like. I like the waveforms, how it's designed so that uh, when sounds are separated from the, the actual waveform, you can, it visually looks different. Like, so you see the large waveforms when it's there. And then if you take out the bait, the drums, for instance, the waveforms, you can see the shadow of the waveform in between. And I think that's really cool. Visually for you, it gives you an idea about what the hell's happening. And it's different from Tractor's version of the four waveforms going across the screen really tiny. So, I mean, there's that. I do think that this is kind of a slicker way of doing it versus the four waveforms. So the other thing I think that's interesting about this is that you have the ability to add effects on individual parts of the stem. And that is cool. That is probably the coolest thing I've seen so far about people dealing with stems. Generally, I mean, it, it, here's the thing. Most people are not DMC DJs and going to be scratching all over the place and doing juggle beat juggles and all this stuff like that. Most people are going to blend two songs together. And if I can take out the bass line and just have an acapella and drums going when I'm mixing. That is awesome. That's all I need right now. Um, so like, I think that's pretty much standard for most DJs that are going to be using this thing in any way. <laughs> There's very few people that are going to be scratching in and doing doubles or whatever at a club. Like there's very few people are going to, and if it is, it's real tiny. <laughs> Cause that is so niche. You don't realize how niche that is as a DJ. We may appreciate it, but Regular fans and Nancy from accounting who just wants to dance to Beyonce, she is not like this, right? So let's so say like you you gotta keep that in perspective when everyone's hype about what you're gonna do, whatever. So 
Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Things I do not like about STEM so far, in my in my personal opinion, and it, and I want to separate this from everybody else's reviews. I did watch Mojack's thing, and I agree with him about a couple things. But like that, that's the cool thing about being a DJ. Everybody has their own perspective, and I would say everybody's right. I think he's probably more right than I am, but uh, but like you know, everybody has their own perspective about that. And one of the things I agree with him is that CPU is intensive. Holy crap. <laughs> Almost to the point where stems was unusable on my laptop if I tried to do it on the fly. If I did an advance and put in the stems folder, it was fine. But I can say personally from using virtual DJ that when you use virtual DJ stems, it's not even a blimp on your CPU. It's the smoothest thing I've ever seen as far as intensity from your CPU usage. Out of all of the software I've seen so far, Virtual DJ has the smoothest thing. It is, it is like you're scratching your back. Like it's nothing. It is super smooth. So kudos to Virtual DJ. I think that people need to sit down and talk to them because they know more than you do. This is ugly. All right, all right. Uh, <laughs> shots fired. Anyways, anyways, Virtual DJ gang, shout out to y'all. You know who you are. I think the CPU intensive thing is a problem and probably you know it is a beta so you know maybe they'll, they'll kind of get this under wraps a little bit but i think that we're at this point now where serato is just gonna have to be for like m2 chips for for apple or like a core i7 and like that's that's ridiculous like that's that's no good you have to figure this out because if your thing bogs down a computer where we can't even load another song or a and your computer just starts crapping out, just playing two songs together, that's no good, all right? <laughs> that is no good, and no one's going to use this cool new feature if that's a factor. All right, so CPU intensive is a colossal problem. So my biggest personal beef with the stems and so far how I've seen been implemented into, is that a word? How it's been put into <laughs> all of the DJ software so far is the lack of hardware. And I'm gonna make a point real quick here. Oh, you see this mofo here? As it stands right now, stems is either on or off. That's it, that's all you got. That sucks, <laughs> that sucks a lot. Especially for how I DJ, being on or off is dumb to me. I would like to be able to say, hey, let me turn on the drums. <laughs> let me move down the bass line a little bit then make it pop back up. I would like to do that. There is zero hardware that will give you the ability to do any of these things. Everything is just on or off like a gate. And to me, that's trash. And and so for such a big update, because this is what, 3.0? Like it, it's a huge update for Serato. And there is nothing so far for Virtual DJ, Algorithm DJ, or Serato that supports stemmed natively as hardware. And that's one point as hardware. Now I'm going to put the little attractive thing now, but I'm just, I'm making my point here. The lack of hardware stinks and it makes this thing be more of a gimmick than a cool feature that everybody's going to use going forward. Now the problem for this, and I'm not a design guru or somebody who <laughs> went to design school or whatever, putting levels into a controller or a mixer is going to be a colossal problem unless they're little dinky tiny levers that are this big or whatever. Like that's going to take up a lot of space. So either you're going to have to make a larger controller or you're going to have to move some things around that you don't possibly need, get rid of buttons. I don't know, but I think that there should be some kind of controller that that does have this kind of stuff on there. Now, Tractor has done it. I hate to be harping on Tractor a lot, but I'm just saying, Tractor did it with the S8. They did it with the D2, which was basically these with screens on them. No jog wheel, which is a, a colossal error on their part. But still, you have the ability to do it. My best suggestion would be maybe like a Rain 12, with the EQs on the corner of it with a smaller jog wheel, something like that, that could kind of work. So you have like an S11 or something like that, like a, a full size mixer. 
that that makes sense. That's doable. And and having dedicated hardware that's designed to take advantage of this stuff with screens, with screens and a jog wheel, I think that is the best solution to this. Rain said, well, they previewed that they're working on some kind of hardware to take advantage of this situation. And hopefully they take this upon themselves to add things like levers, faders, and, and uh, screens next to a jog wheel. Now, if they did that, that would be cool. I think a lot of people will buy those just, just because. Uh, but, you know, we'll see. So lack of dedicated hardware is a colossal problem. CPU intensity, that's a, a colossal problem. <laughs> Do I think this thing's going to catch on and everyone's going to use it? I don't know. So far, as it stands right now, and all of the implementations and all the software and hardware that's been available right now, nobody's taking advantage of the fact that STEMS is available. So we're talking, this is number four DJ software, Serato's last DJ software that's native STEM support. And as far as I can tell, virtual DJ people use it a little bit, but not really. Algorithm DJ people use it as a gimmick, but not really. Also, I haven't really seen a lot of those people at Algorithm DJ. Outside of my boy, I, I've really seen a lot of people DJ professionally with Algorithm DJ. That's more like a beginning software. And, and now Serato. So now maybe Serato is the kick in the pants that Stems needs to go mainstream. Maybe. <laughs> it's still fairly gimmick. And I think that most people need to realize that as much as we love all of this stuff, most DJs just blend two songs together as they call it a day. Maybe loop a couple things. Majority of the things goes unused. And I made a video about that. And <laughs> it wasn't, I think people took it as a negative. And I was not saying it was a negative. I was just stating the fact that most DJs just blend the two songs together. And that's as far as it goes. So, I mean, it is what it is. The other caveat, and I think people need to be aware about this, is file size. So, if you use stems on the fly, it doesn't take up that much space. I think it's like in a, a buffer or a cache or whatever, and it disappears when you close the hardware, when you close your DJ software. Uh, but if you add your files to the stems folder, well, I got news for you, buddy. <laughs> so in some cases, stem files like double, triple the size of the regular file. If you're going to use stems, you need to get like external hard drive because this is going to add up tremendously on your computer. Uh, so I, I mean, it's up to you. I, I still believe that generally, I think that there's only going to be a couple songs for anybody's in, in a set in on an average, just in general. I think that there may be a couple songs that you may mix a lot or daily or whenever you do a set that you're like, okay, I would love to have stems to fool around with this song or make a remix or do whatever way in advance. And so you may have like 20 songs or whatever that you're going to focus this on. You're not going to do your entire library with stems. That seems pointless because <laughs> you don't need it. Like if you have an extended mix of a song with drums that, you know, like a 16 bar intro with drums or 32 bar intro of drums, stems, is, that's not necessary. <laughs> you can also jump around to the section where you can do stuff. Like is that, it's not revolutionary. But it is cool. And I like seeing cool things in DJ software. And I like to see more cool things happen in the future. Um, I don't think that we've reached peak coolness in DJ software. I don't think that's happened yet. There's still more things that could be done. And and especially with EQing and loops and effects and that kind of stuff. Like we haven't scratched the surface. So it, you know, like we're in an interesting time and I think that all of this is gravy. So I, I want to be clear that this is all great stuff. I would definitely like to see how they polish this thing and make it better. And uh, hopefully they're listening to some kind of feedback because CPU thing is a drag, like right? <laughs> just in general, especially when there is another software out there that is doing a better job of it for longer. And so I think that it's just growing pains and they'll figure it out. But like it is CPU things a drag. 
I was like, yay, stems. Oh, <laughs> I would never use this in public. Like, <laughs> this is, I was like, wow, stems are, ah, ooh. <laughs> My laptop's an i5. Ah, I, I, I know it's time to upgrade, but um, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't do a, a proper set fooling around with stems all day. Like, that's insane. Uh, <laughs> probably like M1, M2 could handle it okay. But um, as it stands right now, that that is insane. But, you know, we'll see. We will see where this goes. Anyways, um, I'm very interested to see what you guys think about stems. Are you like rah, rah, rah on board? Or is this a thing that's, that's going on with Serato right now? It's a fad, like goth something, whatever. <laughs> Serato painted his nails black. Like, like, is it a fad or is it like a, this is a real thing that you're going to be using from here going forward. Let me know about that. Uh, anyway, if you want to support the channel, buy something from my t-shirt shop. Link is in the description. DJKeel.store. I appreciate everybody that subscribed to my channel. I appreciate all the feedback, all the comments, all the people shout me out on Instagram. And I don't use Facebook, <laughs> Facebook, but like, you know, uh, you know, everybody shouting me out on uh, messages and stuff like that. Yo, I appreciate that. I do respond. Thank you for that. Thank you for all the love and support. Anyways, thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe and uh, peace out. Please.